five, four, three, two, one, go. Jorn Valdegard, winner of the RAC rally last year, leads the 168 competitors away from Birmingham to start the final round of the Sedan Championship. Shortcuts seem to be quite in order on the twisty tarmac roads of Budley Safari Park. This is typical of the spectator stages which make up the first day's rallying. Stig Bloomquist follows the accepted line in the Saab Turbo. Marco Elaine has chosen to drive a Stratos for this event. Mikola follows the fast line too, but the tarmac is slippier than it looks. is Walter Rawl, who finds traction on these stages no problem at all, thanks to the strategic location of his co-driver. Ari Vatanen is the first driver to stick to the official route. Pond follows the majority line, but finds 300 horsepower, something of an embarrassment, and almost copies Mikola. The Chevette was designed specifically to win the RAC rally, so Auricola is trying particularly hard. Despite the weather, over 40,000 spectators crowd into the now traditional stage in Birmingham's Sutton Park, where Valdegard is first through the infamous Ford. Elaine takes over the lead in the manoeuvrable Stratos. He has no trouble at all with the Ford, unlike at least one of his fellow countrymen. That's car number six is on Arnie Vatterman. And he went straight on. He didn't read that at all well. Auricola is fifth, with all the forests yet to come. <laughs> Clark leads the Sedan Championship and only needs a good finish on this event to win the title. He takes no risks on the first day. Russell Brooks, joint second in the championship, is also up amongst the front runners and trying hard in front of his home crowd. John Taylor demonstrates his rallycross technique. Do you remember the first stage this morning? Yes. What do you remember about that? Oh, Christ, I had an accident there two years ago and um, it was very slippery again. I suppose that's something to do with the camels and the lions, isn't it? Bjorn, what sort of day have you had? Uh, it hasn't been too bad. Slippery. I start up with a spin in the first corner of the rally. Roger, what sort of day you had? Uh, as you know, it's been wet and slippery, but uh, nothing's gone wrong and I've enjoyed it. Do you know why you're lying? Oh, I haven't a clue. Uh, it's early days yet. Day two brings the first forest stages, but Bloomquist is soon to retire. Elaine continues to lead. As they reach the longer forests, Mikola makes his move. Pond has lost several minutes with jammed rear brakes and he's well down the field. Brooks has also suffered locked rear brakes, dropping him out of contention for the moment. Elaine leads by over a minute, the nimble Stratos still proving unbeatable in the slippery conditions. Mikola starts setting the pace, however, and moves into second.
Despite his own backseat driver, Rawl drops to third. The TR7 starts to climb through the field and Pond promises to remove his brain for the night stages. Clark is still driving steadily, well inside the top 10. Voldegaard's car suffers several minor problems and he can't keep up with Mikola. John Taylor's Escort is the only one fitted with fuel injection and this is causing trouble. As Kielder approaches, Clark arrives for routine service. Auricola is now fourth, but his Chevette has problems. And five gallons of fuel. Voldegaard is having trouble with his brakes now. He calls in for a quick check. From the front? Yeah. Well, do, you want, do you want to leave yeah. them in? Yeah. What, what about the balance? Yeah. That's okay. So we leave the pads as they are. Or change the back for the... the, uh, but the, 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 well, if, the back. if the balance is okay, yeah. you're going to have new pads in the back again then. Then you've got to burn that lot in. Yeah. yeah but I would leave them until next time. Clark's only problem is a broken starter motor, which the Ford mechanics change rapidly. Penti Auricola seems to be in some doubt about fitting an air filter for the long forests. You keep the air cleaner on for the moment, yes? The working conditions don't impress the Ford mechanics at all. I don't want another job like that, but alright. Clark sets out for the toughest section of the rally, 60 miles in Kielder Forest. Now the Ford team make their move. By the time they reach the Lake District, Hanu Mikola leads by over seven minutes. Clark is now third, whilst Elaine Stratos and the entire Vauxhall team have gone missing. Rawl is fourth behind Clark. Most uncharacteristically, Bjorn Valdegard has had an accident, but he still manages fastest time on this stage, and he holds second place. Brooks is back in the top ten, and having a terrific tussle with Tony Pond in the unwieldy TR7, he too moves up the order. Helping to organise Ford's complex service schedule is Graham Robson. Whose clutch are you changing? Uh, we're changing Roger's clutch purely as a routine uh, operation because they get such a lot of hard work on this event that rather than have a, an enforced change, we've got about half an hour to spare at Newby Bridge and we're doing it there. Into Wales for the final two days and Mikola already looks a winner. His lead is still over seven minutes and the next two places are held by his own teammates. Voldegaard himself is two minutes clear of the third place man, but he can do nothing about Mikola. Pond is putting absolutely everything into his last ever TR7 drive. If he doesn't win, it won't be for want of trying. Brooks is now on his favourite stages, and he begins to close the gap on Rawl. Mikola has no problems at all. His escort requires only routine servicing throughout the final loop. Co-driver Anna Hertz can afford to be polite. Next to arrive is Valdegaard. Mm. 
Brooks is still running, but Roger Clark appears to be missing. Still maintaining your lead? Yes, yes. Any problems with the car? No, not at all. It's gone very well. Just taking nice and steady now? Yes. Yes, you're in third now. Uh, yes, we caught Walter all up on the long anti-hutch, Dave. Um, in fact, we're quite pleased because we actually passed him on the stage, so we took the lead from him. And then he went off on the following stage, I gather, and lost about 15 minutes. Trying to keep up with you? Peter. <laughs> I would like to think that, yes. Um, we've not heard a lot about Tony Pond, but we gather from an official result that he's some way behind as well, so he must have had some problems. Roger, you had some bad luck. Right, so not with my year. <laughs> well, what happened? Um, we had a clutch break going through one of the stages, and uh, we were driving without a clutch. And we came to uh, a rather tricky corner and uh, misjudged it and went off. But the, the problem, we got the car sorted out and uh, we tried to start and we had no clutch and we had no starter motor either, so we couldn't move the car. When you say it hasn't been your year, you, you're leading the championship, so it's not been a bad year up to now. Well, we were looking forward to doing one on the RAC. Very bad luck. Life. The penultimate stage and Mikola is now sure of victory. With less than five miles to go, he leads by almost six minutes. Voldegaard is equally safe in second place, six minutes clear of his pursuers. Brooks really storms through the last stages to make it a 1-2-3 for Ford. Pond ends his Leyland career on a high note with fourth. Last minute engine problems drop the unfortunate roll to sixth. His own problems finally solved, John Taylor finishes seventh. For the seventh year running, a Ford Escort wins the RAC rally. For Ford, it's a particularly sweet victory. A major strike at the factory forces them to rely on dealers to prepare all their cars. In the end, it makes no difference at all. Hanu Mikola and Arna Hertz get the champagne yet again. It's their fourth international rally win of 1978 and gives them the Sedan Open Rally Championship.